here we are. Uh, didn't seem like very long, but uh, we're back at this. Um, we've got the results in from the last pairing um, in round one, which is the Primos Proof One uh, versus the Moultrie A700. Uh, both, you know, I know you're high on the Moultrie, I'm high on the Primos. Uh, they both, both look like really good cameras. Um, what we end up with? Well, I'll tell you what, I, I, I expected a tough fight, and that's what we got. The, the Primos and Moultrie were uh, very close. Um, there was one little technological glitch with the Primos at, at around 2 a.m. It just stopped taking pictures, and I, we can't tell you why. It just stopped taking pictures. Uh, and it didn't start taking pictures again until like 7 in the morning. Daylight, it seemed like. Yeah, so I don't know if it was a fact that uh, an energy level from a battery perspective or, or what, but uh, that was a that was a ding against it. So that gave the Moultrie an advantage, and it was uh, probably almost three to one. How much was that on picture? Yeah, nine <laughs> nine nine hundred to nine hundred to three seventy three. So three to one, three to one on the Moultrie as far as pictures taken. Uh, quality of the pictures I thought was comparable, and not only comparable, but I think they're one of the better pictures that we saw both nighttime and daytime yeah, um, from both those cameras. So, uh, but I think the net net someone's got to win here. And um, I think we decided that the Moultrie goes into round two, yeah. right? So, yeah. We so any, um, as we go through this, there's been some kind of key learnings as we evaluate these cameras. Uh, some cameras I thought that were, gonna, were performing really well and up to my needs. And finding out that maybe not. Yeah, I think the key here is you really don't know what you're missing until you got two or three cameras out there trying to take the same picture. Mm -hmm. um, so that that's interesting. Um, that that's my biggest takeaway from this is, is you don't if you don't see it you, you don't know you're missing it right. That's so. Right. Um, so it'll be interesting too. There's some big functionality difference between these cameras, and then you know we're not even talking about prices yet on them. So uh, I think that's going to come into play, uh, you know, when we do when we summarize this. And we've not uh, we have both of us own a fair fair inventory of uh, wildlife innovations, and uh, we did not include that in our test. And uh, I think we both felt that hey, it was towards the the lower end of our performing performing cameras, but uh, so that kind of gives you perspective from a user from a user and listener perspective. If you have those, um, we believe that they're below the standard we've set just for the other cam other brands that we have. Still use them, still meet a need from our price point perspective, but uh, I think you're going to see some other results that might change your buying habits from here. Super Bowl challenge of trail cameras between the brands that we have. Uh, pretty exciting uh, results what we found today. Yeah, yeah. I mean, again, just revisiting with our uh, viewers, we've got three cameras that that won. They're way out of round one, and um, are competing competing against uh, each other here in the uh, in the Super Bowl. Yeah. Right. So we've got Stealth. Um, we've got the Moultrie, and we've got the Browning. So let's, let's talk about these, and again, we're comparing these um, on the same fence post, taking the pictures of the same wildlife that's out in front of them, and uh, what are the results, Tim? Well, I mean, the results are, is that uh, Moultrie took 1,200 pictures, the Browning took 965, and the Stealth took 609 from a you know, every 30 seconds, um, 
But then that's not the only criteria we used, right? So quantity was certainly a, um, a good indicator for sensitivity, but what was our next one we looked at? Yeah, I think the other two big criteria we used were picture quality, both during the day and then during the night. Um, and is it safe to say that the, the stealth really didn't cut the mustard when it came to uh, the picture quality? Um, like the browning and the mulcher. Oh, I think that's a fair statement. It, it performed better than I thought it was going to. I mean, I think it surprised even yourself, you know, because you'd had some mediocre results, but then once we put it through this battery, it, it, it did pretty well. Yeah, yeah, I, I was. This is probably by far the, the most surprising camera that, uh, that I put into the bag anyway, but I would use the analogy like Kansas City's offensive line in the Super Bowl, just didn't perform, and poor Mahoney, uh, Patrick is feeling the bruises today. Oh right? yeah, he so, certainly uh, is. Let's take the stealth out of the out of the picture here, and uh, let's narrow it down to uh, the Moultrie A700 in the in the Browning here. So the Moultrie's a uh, like we said, it's a two year old two year old model. The Browning's at least a three year old model couple of interesting little things. The Browning has a white light, a white flash, uh, so it's probably not as concealable as some of these other cameras. However, I've not seen it impact wildlife uh, to, a, to a great degree where, and where I use it. Um, it only takes six batteries, so that's an interesting thing. But it, yeah, it performed well um, in the you know, taking back picture after picture after picture. So whatever it's doing, it's doing right. Sensitivity, uh, it is, so we did a 20 and a 30 yard uh, sensitivity test for all these cameras. This camera is the only camera uh, to pass the 30 yard test. 90 feet, yeah, that's a long ways. So pretty interesting, it's a good camera, but it's also a little more expensive. Pretty happy. The, the quality on both of these cameras from a picture perspective, day or night, or, is excellent. Pretty close. Pretty close competition. However, the winner is... Moultrie. It took uh, 20 plus percent more pictures than the brown. That and the picture qualities were... Uh, even this had the white light. This has the, the IR lights. Um, but really very close, um, almost identical quality at night, and daytime pictures were superb. And I think we both hate ourselves for saying this, right? But Unbelievable. Because we're not, um, up till this point, we're, we've, we've both done a lot of Moultries. I've been a Moultrie fan um, early on in my uh, hunting career, uh, but had miserable luck with them, to be honest with you. Well, I mean, not just cameras, I mean, been very disappointed in the Moultrie brand. I think that's the thing is, is they, they had our trust and they disappointed us. But right now, the next test for this camera will be is, is longevity, how long will it last? I mean, that's, the, that's really the key. Yeah, so and again, just so again, uh, head to head, um, using the bracketology that we used, um, the Moultrie A700. And I think that's key because one of the things that I've, I think real, this has really driven home to me is it's not necessarily brand specific, but it's brand and model specific. Um, doesn't mean that the A900 or the A9700i would perform the same, um, but pretty darn good camera for the price. And again, the price on this one? Uh, $69. $69. You can buy it today on, on the internet, wherever yeah. we found it. So. Would you buy one of those, Joel? I would. Um, I, I would. Um, I'm hoping they even get cheaper. Is what I'm <laughs> hoping that they discontinue these and uh, that Joel buys in at 45 bucks or 50 bucks or whatever it is. But uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm a fan. Yeah, I'm a fan. Yeah, I think I'll just leave the, the audience with is, uh, so the next episode that we do after this is we're going to throw the bracketology out of this and we're really going to rate these cameras on uh, some different criteria that we necessarily didn't take consideration 
uh, using the bracketology methodology. I agree. Yeah. So thanks for watching. Uh, kudos to the Super Bowl champ, uh, Moultrie A700. And we appreciate everybody tuning in. And uh, if you like the stuff that we're doing, I'd encourage you to subscribe to our channel on Facebook, Instagram, or on YouTube, and uh, subscribe. Thanks for listening or watching our show. We have some exciting topics and guests coming up. We ask that you subscribe to our channel on YouTube and follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. We look forward to hearing your suggestions for topics, questions, and comments. This is Two Dumbasses signing off. Until next time, be, be safe, safe, have, have fun, fun, and, and get, get outdoors. outdoors.